Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to MZ Webinars. We're really thrilled that you could join us this afternoon. We have um, Anthony Horn, who is the Sales Director for Further Education from MZ. He's with us and he is our presenter today. So um, we'll go over to him in a second. But if you have any questions throughout the course of the webinar, it'd be great if you could just put them in your um, box on your control panel where it says questions, and we'll get to those at the end of the presentation. So without any further ado, I'd like to hand over to Anthony. And good afternoon, Anthony. Hi, Debbie. Thanks for that. Good afternoon, everyone. And thanks for joining us on today's MZ webinar. As Debbie mentioned there, we're going to be talking about how to communicate your economic and social impact. A few different ways you can do that and a few different ideas about how we can help you to do so. Um, so uh, what we'll cover on today's uh, webinar over the next 20, 25 minutes or so. Quick introduction to uh, MZ and what we do. Um, and then I'm going to run through four different elements of impact. Uh, and kind of the four most important in many ways impacts that uh, colleges and other training providers have. Um, so firstly, what impact do you have on your learners? Um, how can you articulate that and perhaps why is it important? Secondly, are you a safe bet for government funding and indeed funding from any other body that, uh, that provides you with monies? And how can you demonstrate that? Thirdly, um, what is your kind of actual impact on local and regional economy and uh, wider society um, coming from your day to day core operations? And then finally, um, in many ways, the most important and most unique impact that colleges and other further education providers have, what are the sort of fundamental longer term impacts that your organization and your provision has. So uh, to kick things off then, a quick introduction to MZ um, for those of you who don't know us. Um, we are a global labor market specialist. Uh, we are headquartered out in uh, the US. Uh, we also have a, a large presence here in the UK. Uh, we do lots of different things, but our core mission is to use labour market and economic data to drive economic prosperity. Uh, we want to bring together people, education and employers, increasingly using the common language of skills to help um, regional development and uh, prosperity and to help people lead better lives as they progress through uh, the labour market and, and jobs within it. And a big part of what we do is our economic impact work, which is largely what I'm referring to on today's webinar. And in fact, the MZ economic impact model was the very first thing that MZ ever did uh, some 20 years ago uh, out in uh, Idaho in, in the US. And, and we were trying to do a number of key things there. Um, so the two uh, gentlemen who set up MZ as a, as a, as a company uh, had experience in uh, regional economic development and regional economic impact work and also uh, wider work around um, uh, how regional economies connect together and how they how they interact with each other so they had uh, the um, the theoretical background and they they developed a passion to help um, educational institutions apply that recognized economic impact methodology but with some added value because they quite quickly understood that uh, further education colleges and other training providers have a unique impact and a unique position within regional economies. Those organisations are often uh, uh, have often been present in a regional economy for a long time and are therefore having long term impacts, which is something we'll come back to later on in the webinar. Uh, further education colleges and, and other providers have a very varied provision. Uh, you don't need me to tell you that. Uh, you know, you, you deal with uh, all ages, you deal with various different levels, short courses, longer courses, apprenticeships, higher education programs, work with uh, uh, with all kinds of different uh, communities and, and individuals from those communities. So it was all about uh, working out how to take all of that varied work and varied provision into account and work out how we can help you 
demonstrate the impact of all of that work um, for a number of different reasons and to a number of different external stakeholders. And in fact, very recently, um, Shell Christofferson, who is one of those two gentlemen who established MZ and established the MZ Economic Impact Model, published a book uh, where he talks about uh, how colleges are economic engines. And uh, lots of what I refer to today is um, very much coming from uh, from his work. So if you do get the chance, I urge you to, to take a look at that. So let's get into the content then. First of all, uh, what impact do you have on your learners? Which is obviously the kind of core reason for your existence. The core reason behind everything that you do is around learners and students. So how can you help them to understand the benefits of education and, and particularly the benefits of uh, attending your institution? So if we think about it from a, a cost versus benefits perspective, um, we can think of some costs that learners uh, incur. Some might incur a fee, but of course we appreciate not all do in, in further education and, and further education providers. And they might have costs for um, course materials, books and, and other supplies perhaps. And then all learners uh, will have um, a cost in the sense of lost earnings. Uh, so they could be working if they weren't attending college. And obviously those lost earnings will be very different for a 16 year old versus a, a 30 year old manager, for example. We can take all of those uh, things into account. Um, and then if we think about benefits, so what direct benefits do learners get from attending your institution? Uh, increased employability, of course, um, increased employment options in, in the short, medium and long term, which is then translated into increased earning potential uh, over their lifetime uh, in the workforce and within that uh, labour market um, progression they'll see their career move through different uh, stages and, and, and different different areas and we can we can track uh, all of this and, and, and all of all of those impacts numerically and financially as they as they accrue to your to your learner cohort so think about it this way so learners gain more skills they become more productive themselves that in turn makes them more valuable to employers who want to employ them and pay them more money. As they become more productive and, and are earning more money and, and, and are working within those, uh, those full time jobs, that increases employers productivity and increases income that employers are generating. So you can imagine a sort of uh, um, a kind of whirlpool effect of more earnings and more local spending happening more taxation collected, more local economic in income and prosperity happening and occurring, uh, and, and all of that kind of generating up into, into uh, more regional economic activity and, and, and positivity. But from a learner perspective, where do they sit in that? Well, the, the, the key kind of metric that we can help you to demonstrate is how uh, average earnings change and differ by different education levels. And, and an important point to, to note there is that um, these average earnings by education level will differ between different regions. Uh, we have all of that data and can, and can help you articulate it. So what you see on the screen here is actually an example from uh, recent work we did with the Sheffield College, um, which they are making fantastic use of. And, and you don't need me to, sh to, to demonstrate there that you can see a difference between, for example, a, a learner who has achieved a level two versus a learner who doesn't have a qualification and, and what direct impact that's going to make on their uh, earning potential as they progress through their career. And if we think about that kind of concept, it's not just all about um, qualifications. It's not just all about um, if you have a level two qualification, you will earn more than anyone else. What we're actually measuring in our model, and I think this is really important for, for providers to understand, is that each hour of learning is actually important. So essentially what we're measuring is how much additional economic productivity and economic income we can assign to each hour of learning. And then we will see an uplift uh, for those individuals who do gain a qualification. But someone who's gone through a level two qualification and who perhaps hasn't necessarily achieved for whatever reason, 
is still more productive and will be earning uh, potentially earning more money than someone who doesn't have any qualification and who hasn't gone through any training at all. So imagine it as a, as a concept of building blocks. So each hour of learning that someone undertakes is adding a building block uh, towards their productivity and therefore towards their um, value and earning potential as they progress through their career. Second thing to consider uh, is, is around funding. So are you a safe bet for government funding and indeed uh, any other funding bodies that, that you receive monies from? And, and how can you show a direct return on investment to that money that uh, you receive from those uh, funding bodies? This is obviously a very important issue. So, you know, the, 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 the further education sector has had good news recently around um, uh, the, the uplift to uh, core funding, which is great news, um, but we 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 of course know that Ofsted are still um, uh, you know uh, very active. Um, they are still looking at things like the impact of of, of uh, colleges and what um, what actual value they they bring to their communities. Um, we know that um, uh, things like skills advisory panels are potentially going to receive an increased influence in deciding which FE courses receive funding um, and most recently we've heard that uh, the new minister has um, announced a, a white paper uh, to, to come at some point this year um, which will talk about the, the, the future of further education. So it's, it's, a, it's a very important issue in the sense that um, any college and any provider should want the ability to demonstrate the returns that they give uh, for the, the funding that they receive. Um, so if we think about how uh, how this um, all works and how it, it all fits together. So we've just talked there previously about um, how individuals undertake training and they become uh, more productive and they earn more money uh, and they spend more money and that, uh, that then flows through the economy. That then becomes uh, useful to employers who will employ more people and start um, generating more work themselves as employees and as businesses, more output. Um, that then means more tax. So more tax is collected from the individual workers, uh, particularly as they start to earn more money, more taxes uh, collected from the uh, business output that the employer themselves are generating. And then all of the additional spending that happens because of uh, increased productivity, uh, that then also generates additional spending, additional taxation, uh, and additional um, positivity for uh, the taxpayer. Um, so we can measure that very directly for a further education college or um, uh, any other provider. So we can look at the costs. So the direct costs to the government are the, the annual uh, funding that uh, that institution receives. We can then um, calculate those detailed benefits that uh, financially accrue from that initial injection of, of annual funding from, from the government and indeed other funders. And we can break that out into uh, tax revenues as I've just described. And then also uh, we can calculate the government savings that uh, accrue from uh, people being more productive and people having higher levels of qualification. So essentially monies that the government don't have to spend uh, that they that they would uh, otherwise have to, and I guess an important kind of factor there is that that's positive, right? We can show the kind of positive trend, and we can show the positive um, uh, difference between the initial input of, of money. In this case, uh, you know, thirty-eight million pounds uh, is going in on an annual basis to this particular provider, but actually on an annual basis, this this provider can show that they are uh, generating way in excess of that in terms of what they are paying back. So that's really a solid return on investment in anyone's book. But I think a really important point for colleges to make is that, um, yes, uh, we receive considerable public funding each year. But if you look at the amount of students that we talked about earlier on, we serve and you look at the positive uh, returns that we give um, and the fact that we continue to pay back. So you might give us 38 million pounds a year, we'll pay you back that 38 million pounds in, in, in whatever it is, four, five, six years, and we'll then continue to pay back more and more and more 
uh, as we as we progress through um, uh, each year from from now. So additional tax receipts will will continue to accrue each year, and will continue to be generated by more productive people and productive businesses uh, each year going forward. So it's not a one-off deal; it's an ongoing return on investment that colleges and other providers will provide and give for their public funding. And, and I would ask the question, what other publicly funded projects or, or organisations can really make that case so clearly? Well, well, you can and we can we can help you to do that. And if we kind of take that sort of concept as a stage further, this will uh, give a good introduction into our next section about your impact on wider society and then uh, also the kind of the, the local economy. So how can you show those those benefits even more broadly. Um, well, when we're thinking about uh, benefits to society and, and what economists call social externalities, um, the one of the concepts that economists use is the beekeeper analogy. Um, so, um, uh, beekeepers exist to um, you know uh, make honey, right, <laughs> uh, and sell uh, their honey. Uh, and look after their bees and, and, and make a living from, from that. However, there are also a range of other benefits that um, come from the fact that beekeepers exist. So nearby flowers will benefit from, uh, from, from the bees' existence and vice versa. Uh, nearby um, orchards or any other kind of food production facilities will um, benefit because the bees will spread their pollen, etc. Uh, etc. Et so in a sense, there are many uncompensated uh, benefits that accrue from the original existence of uh, the beekeeper um, and in many ways educational providers such as further education colleges are very similar so their kind of core reason for being as we talked about right at the start is, is about students and it's about uh, upskilling and helping individuals get better jobs and have better more successful lives for themselves and their families but there are a number of external benefits created um, through the existence and operation of uh, a college or other provider, um, and we can measure those. Uh, so social externalities that are directly um, accruable to further education colleges are things like um, better health. Um, so there's a direct correlation between increased levels of education and time spent in education and better healthcare, and we can break out the costs that are avoided so that society don't have to pay for for various different uh, health related factors uh, and indeed uh, likewise with crime and uh, also un unemployment benefits as well so we can we can calculate all of those things and, and, and help you show how you have a, a positive impact to to wider society and in fact that um, that investment we talked about on the previous slide that's coming from essentially the taxpayer uh, via the government is a very safe bet and is a very uh, is a very safe and sound bet that will be paid back directly and indirectly um, uh, multifold as, as time goes on. If we then uh, think about um, something that you may have heard of called the, uh, the multiplier effect. So this is um, a way of thinking about how the local and, and regional economy benefits from the work uh, that you do as, as a college or a provider. Um, the, the, the principle is quite a simple one, really. Imagine if you drop a, a stone into a, a pool of water, um, there will be you know, ripples that are strongest right near where you drop the stone in that will then radiate outwards, right? Well, the same principle applies to um, money spent in an economy and an activity um, that is rippling out from that uh, initial spend. Uh, and, uh, and we can apply that methodology to a college. Um, so the concept is, you know, imagine you uh, you bought a, co a coffee from the college canteen this morning. Uh, there'll be that initial effect of increasing the daily takings at the the canteen or coffee shop. Um, that 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 will then benefit the the workers within that coffee shop, the the owners of the coffee shop itself. They will then spend that money again, and it will ripple through um, the economy through their wages and their spend on on, on other things. Uh, and then that's obviously repeated uh, time and time again as the money kind of flows through, uh, flows through the economy. And that's really what we can uh, what we can measure and apply uh, as a concept to um, colleges. So um, 
imagine the institution itself spends a lot of money on goods and supplies and wages. Um, that money then flows through uh, the economy um, and has those ripple multiplier effects. Uh, we can measure that on an annual basis and, and, and come to a figure that is essentially saying there's additional regional income uh, in the case of this institution uh, of in excess of uh, 42 million pounds uh, each year. Longer term impact now. Um, so we've talked there almost about um, yearly annual impacts and um, I guess you know which college wouldn't want uh, to to be able to demonstrate those things. Uh, you know the, the impacts that um, you have on learners and their learning potential, the um, strong returns to government or other funding bodies, wider benefits to society in terms of um, avoided social costs, um, the short-term multiplier effect of the money you spend on your buildings and on your your staff wages all backed up with uh, excuse me all backed up with external uh, validated uh, data analysis that, that we can help you with um, but of course it doesn't end there and it shouldn't end there really um, because uh, colleges are um, as I mentioned at the start often entities that have existed for some time within a local community and a local economy they are huge assets to their local area um, so understanding and being able to demonstrate those longer term impacts are uh, really, 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 really vital, quite frankly, and that's something that we can uh, that we can do. Um, so how we do that, um, we, we talked earlier on about um, how the kind of learning and the upskilling that you um, provide to people impacts on their average earnings and also impacts on their um, uh, ability to get a job and be employable and you can see some uh, some kind of graphical representation of that uh, on screen um, we can also kind of measure and help you understand how the fact that um, the hundreds or thousands of students that have attended your institution each year are still being economically productive so some of those may well have left uh, the local region or may not be working uh, in the local region but lots of them will be uh, and we can apply our, our methodology to help you uh, understand that so those kind of hundreds and thousands of students who are still operating in your local regional economy are earning money and as we've seen that will that will uh, increase as they become more skilled and more productive and we can measure that yearly cumulative impact um, so if you if you think those learners that studied with you 10 years ago, perhaps, and achieved or graduated uh, some time ago, um, will have progressed up and through their career trajectory and will be more productive and earning more money than, on average, those learners who left last year. Um, so they're the kind of things that we can, that we, can uh, we can help you uh, uh, measure um, and how we can understand the different sectors that people will typically work in depending on again the region in which you operate the level of qualification that they have and how those different regions will uh, interact with each other um, uh, across the across the UK which are very different so uh, regional economies in in the north uh, where I'm currently sitting will will work and interact with each other very differently to, to those in other parts of, of the country and what we can also uh, uh, measure there is that on a kind of financial basis so those uh, the, the the impact of additional skills is essentially what we're measuring how the the, the former uh, learners that you have, have, have served are uh, earning more money each year again how that's all uh, contributing to business profit and how that all accumulates based on your historic provision going back some 15 20 years for example how that then all ripples through the economy like we saw on previous slides and we can see how that is often a huge number, a huge amount of um, uh, additional regional income to the extent that if we just considered that figure we could see that if a college didn't exist or if a provider didn't exist in a region there'd actually be a massive hole left in that local and regional economy and um, actually the, the amount of um, average wage jobs in an area that you as a provider are supporting 
not just directly employing but supporting because of that additional regional income that you're generating would actually be be pretty uh, pretty significant um, and then I guess finally another thing to think about when we're thinking about impact is is almost getting right down to the to the the detail really so we've talked there about some uh, economic impact methodologies of how we can help you to measure uh, your impact in different ways whether that be to learners to um, uh, funders to society um, on a longer term basis we can also think about the kind of operational side of things so what career pathways or career trajectories have your former students actually taken and 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 how un understanding those and helping you to understand those can also help you to to, to kind of make that case of a, of a strong impact um, uh, on, on individuals working lives and their, their career prospects. So in summary, to wrap things up, um, I would throw a question back to you as, as, uh, as I like to do, which would be, you know, why would you not want to show that your learners will be more employable and will be paid more? With hard evidence of, of those figures and, and hard evidence as to why uh, you can you can make that claim. Why would you not want to show that you give a sound, clear, solid return on investment to anyone who funds you, whether that be the government, um, LEP, or others, and how you can demonstrate that that payback period will um, uh, continue uh, going forward? So you pay back. The investment uh, in the short term and then you'll continue to pay back to the funder and, uh, and others uh, going forward. Why would you not want to show that you have those ongoing benefits to, to society and those ongoing benefits to your uh, local economy through just the work and spend that you generate on a daily, weekly, monthly, yearly basis, but also by taking into account the, the typically um, huge historic amount of provision that you've delivered and the huge historic amount of upskilling and productivity that you've supported um, why would you not want to show that and and quite frankly we're here to help with that we've been doing it for 20 years we know exactly what we're doing and, and, and we'd be delighted to talk to anyone who would want to find out more um, so for me that's it uh, you see my details on screen and you'll receive uh, some follow-up materials um, Debbie, do we have any questions or any uh, comments that you want to throw into the uh, the equation now? Um, no, thanks, Anthony. That was a really good webinar. Um, no questions, so you've done a good job. So thank you very much. Brilliant. Well, thanks everyone for joining us today on uh, this MZ webinar. Hope it's been useful, and uh, look forward to speaking to you all soon.